Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video is all about gourmand fragrances. I'm excited for this video because I adore gourmand fragrances and I have my top 10 favorite gourmands that I am the most excited to wear this fall and winter. When the weather starts to get cool, these are the fragrances that I crave the most. Sweet, decadent, gourmand, cozy, sweater weather type of fragrances. Now some of these are more gourmand than others, some of them are more on the foodie side, and some of them are just semi-gourmand. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. I do most perfume, beauty, and makeup on this channel. If you are into that kind of content, I would love it if you would subscribe. And to my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for all your continued support. I really appreciate you. If you are interested in seeing my top 10 gourmands for this fall, then just keep on watching. Okay, chocolate is definitely a note that I really enjoy right now. I get in the mood for chocolate quite a bit, but I am a little picky about my chocolate notes. So I couldn't do this video without talking about Chocolate Greedy by Montal. This is one of my all-time favorite comforting scents. I find this one to be super cozy. This is when it's raining outside and I just want to curl up and watch a movie or read a book. This is the scent that I choose. This just makes me feel so comforted. It's just a comforting chocolate scent. This smells a lot like a powdery chocolate, like a Nesquik. This has notes of cacao, vanilla, there's some dried fruits in here, there's tonka bean, there's a little bit of coffee, and some bitter orange in here. Mostly I get this chocolate that is very powdery to my nose. On my skin it pulls pretty powdery and it kind of reminds me of the Nesquik chocolate. When you open up the pack of chocolate and you sniff the powder, that's what this reminds me me of. I do get a lot of the dried fruits and some of that orange that's in here. I think the combination is really nice because the dried fruits kind of keeps this from being too sweet to my nose. This is definitely more of like a foodie edible kind of gourmand. This definitely will make you smell edible for sure. And like I said, I find it so cozy and just so comforting in those colder days when you just want to snuggle on the couch or do something nice and relaxing in your home. This definitely puts me in the mood for fall. It reminds me of baking. It reminds me of the holidays kind of situation and I just love this one. Now this isn't one that I can wear at all during the spring and summer but right now I am so in the mood for this it's not even funny. So definitely excited to pull this one out. If you love powdery chocolate scents with a little bit of dried fruit then I think you would really enjoy this fragrance. Another chocolatey orange scent. I seem to really like that combination right now in the fall time. There's something about it. It just kind of reminds me of baking, I guess. I really like to bake in the fall, like rich, decadent, chocolatey kind of desserts in the fall. This is by Serendipity 3. This is Serendipitous. This is just another cozy, chocolatey, beautiful scent that I adore. This one's not as much powdery as this reminds me more of chocolate chip cookies. A lot like chocolate chip cookies. This is a very foodie gourmand. You have to be okay with smelling like food in order to like this. This is very realistic chocolate chip cookies or something baking type of situation. I've actually worn this before and I've had people think that something was baking and I knew it was this perfume. I mean, it's kind of crazy the things that I've actually heard people say when I wear this. I've had someone think that they could smell the donut shop next door. <laughs> And I've had people ask if chocolate chip cookies were baking. So this has cocoa, Tahitian vanilla, and blood orange. Again, there's a bit of that orange in here. So it smells more like chocolate chip cookies baking with a little bit of like an orange kind of dessert baking in the background as well. It's very good. It'll make you smell super edible. You'll definitely smell like a snack wearing this. I find the performance to be moderate. It's not a super loud fragrance, but I don't think I'd want this to be super super loud because it is so food like it's so realistic to actual food that if it was too loud it might be a little too much and so I kind of like that this is just a moderate perfume people are gonna smell you I've had people comment on this fragrance before so I know people can smell me but it's not 
overpowering or loud. So this is gorgeous and one of my all-time favorite cozy, comforting, you smell like something's baking type of perfumes. So that is Serendipitous by Serendipity 3. All right, let's talk about an interesting fragrance that is not exactly a foodie gourmand, although it is. It has aspects of foodie gourmand, but there's other stuff in it as well. So this is by Mugler and this is Angel Muse, the EDT version. This is definitely my preferred version. The EDP is a little too much for me, but the EDT is absolutely gorgeous. And even though this is an eau de toilette, it performs really well. I definitely do not have issues with the performance on this. So in the beginning, you have this big blast of passion fruit. That's the first thing I get, just passion fruit. But it starts to dry down into this gorgeous, there's hazelnut cocoa in here. There's cassis. So in the top notes, you have passion fruit, mandarin orange, and lemon. Definitely get that, especially the passion fruit in the top. Middle notes are hazelnut cocoa spread and cassis, and the hazelnut cocoa spread I pick up a lot. Now I think it's a little debatable on how prominent the hazelnut spread is. Some people really pick it up a lot and some people don't at all. For me, I pick it up very strongly. This was not a love at first sniff for me at all. <laughs> I actually was super confused by this perfume when I first got it and didn't think I actually liked it, but I kept going back to it. I found it to be super interesting and yeah, I just absolutely adore it. There is a bit of earthiness in this as well. So that's why this is not a straight up like foodie gourmand to my nose, even though it does have those gourmand touches. There's a vetiver in here and it doesn't list patchouli, but I'm telling you, I'm convinced that there's patchouli in here. It smells like there's patchouli. It's not very strong. It's not like angel EDP. You know what I mean? That kind of really strong patchouli that's in that fragrance. But there is that touch in here just a small amount, and I do pick it up. So I, I'm really not convinced that there's not patchouli, but it's not listed on Fragrantica. But anyway, there's vetiver in here. There's some woody notes in here. There's also some chocolate and caramel in the base. So this is not a full on foodie gourmand to my nose. I definitely pick up those woody notes. I definitely pick up a little patchouli. I really, really, really love the passion fruit and I really love the Nutella kind of vibes from this fragrance. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I am super excited to pull this out and wear this. I have been dying to wear it. I had to put it away for spring and summer, but when it starts to get colder, this is coming out for sure. Okay, up next we have by Atar Collection. This is Cult It Night. I've been talking about this one a lot, a lot, because I love it. <laughs> I absolutely adore this fragrance. This is one of my all-time favorite fragrances in my collection right now, and I'm pretty much, I hate to say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm actually obsessed with this fragrance. It's fair. It's fair for me to use that word because I feel like I really am. <laughs> and I just cannot get enough of this. So this has cinnamon, it has some cherry, it has some red apple, some vanilla, patchouli, and white musk. The patchouli and white musk that's in here is definitely present, so this is not a full-on foodie gourmand, but the gourmand aspects of here are really strong. Like the cinnamon is really strong in here. Oh, it's so good. There's definitely a big blast of cherry, but I also get an equal amount of red apple. This smells very, very red apple to me. There's also a lot of vanilla in here as well. Oh, it's so so good. I absolutely adore this. This definitely has like a Middle Eastern vibe to it, some Middle Eastern kind of touches to this fragrance for sure. It is very rich. It is very decadent. It is very strong. The performance is outstanding. No issues at all. People will definitely smell you. This will definitely last you all day. It is fantastic, super enjoyable. This was love at first sniff. This was a blind buy for me and one of the most successful blind buys to date. And I can't get enough of it. I just think it's so good. It definitely reminds me of like baking pies. You know, like baking a cherry pie or baking a apple pie with some cinnamon. I am so curious about Atar Collection. There are so many from this house that I have my eye on. I've heard lots and lots of good things. This is the only one I've tried so far, but I feel like I'm gonna like a lot of them, you know? I've heard a lot of good things about this house, so definitely very excited to explore more, but Cult at Night is definitely a success for me, and I cannot wait to wear it this fall. Okay, another fragrance that I had to put away for a little while, but I am so ready to pull this out and wear it again. This is by Lolita Limpica, and this is Lolita Land. I haven't actually worn this one in a little while because it's not a fragrance I can wear in the summer at all. 
I forgot how much I love this. I absolutely adore this fragrance. This smells so sweet and good. It is one of those fragrances though that I feel like is wildly interpreted by so many different people because, because there are a ton of notes in here. So there's Bellini, Italian, Mandarin, Orange, there's some pepper, grapefruit, lemon, and lime in the opening. So just in the opening alone, you're getting all of these notes. I get a lot of the Bellini in here. I get some orange for sure. I really don't get any pepper. Maybe a little bit of citruses in the opening. And then in the mid, you have white peach, plum, black currant, and some jasmine, some rose. I definitely pick up that plum and black currant in here. I don't get the peach. Now that's where a lot of people differ because I've heard a lot of people say they pick up peach from this fragrance. Like they get a peach Bellini. How fun is that? I don't really pick that up. I do get Bellini, but I don't get peach. I get more of a plummy, black currant kind of situation going on. And in the base, you have Madagascar vanilla, licorice, benzoin, white musk, and sandalwood. I definitely pick up on that vanilla and that licorice, which I adore licorice in my perfumes. I think this is so good. Plus, the performance on this is really good. This lasts all day on me, and it projects pretty well. So definitely don't have issues with the performance on this fragrance. I think it is a great performing perfume. It is not a very expensive fragrance, if I remember correctly. I don't remember exactly how much. I think it was like $50 somewhere in that vicinity that I paid for this fragrance. So not too bad on the price. I'm not sure how I feel about the cap. You know, you've got that little like dough that has wings <laughs> and like a flower. I don't know how I feel about that, but I don't really care because I absolutely adore this fragrance and I'm not sure why, but all the notes mixed together, like the Bellini with the plum and the licorice kind of reminds me of a root beer float. That's what I get from this fragrance the most is a root beer float. I don't know why. I don't know how. I had one woman tell me that she got peach pancakes from this, which how f that's fun, you know? I don't get peach pancakes from this. I get a root beer float from this. And I just think it's so cozy and so comforting. I'm a broken record, I know. But these perfumes, that's what it invokes in me. A cozy, comforting sweater weather kind of feeling where everything is right in the world and you just feel like you're getting a big hug and yeah this definitely does that for me so adore Lolita Land by Lolita Olympica. I am going to be a repetitive person. I can't do this video without talking about this perfume. I just can't. It's not possible. I'd be a liar. I'd be lying to you if I didn't talk about this fragrance because this is one of my all-time favorite gourmands. As a matter of fact, this is my favorite perfume in my collection. And that is by Killian. This is Angel Share. This is my favorite perfume I own to date. I am so in love with this perfume, I cannot even tell you. I don't know what it is about it, but it just smells like, it smells like home to me. It smells like it's me, you know? I feel like myself. I feel like it's everything I love. It's got this delicious cognac with some cinnamon. It's like this spiced apple pie baking with some boozy notes and then there's some woody notes in here too. So this is not a full-on gourmand to my nose. I never ever get sick of this. I never get tired of smelling this. You guys might be tired of me talking about this perfume but I can't get over how much I love it. Like it hits me in all the feels. It makes me feel all my feelings and it just makes me feel so happy. So like I mentioned, top notes is cognac and then middle notes is cinnamon, tonka bean, and oak. Base notes are praline, vanilla, and sandalwood. Now I do get the sandalwood and I do get the oak in here as well, which I really, really think is important to have in this fragrance because without it, it would be too much. It would be too sweet. It would be too over the top, boozy apple pie. I don't really want to smell full on like a baking apple pie necessarily. So having those woody notes in there really to me helps kind of make this a well-rounded fragrance. To me, this is a complete well-rounded, very well done fragrance that I adore. So if you want to smell like the holidays, if you want to smell like joy, <laughs> If you want to smell like every happy memory from the holidays you ever had as a kid, this is the fragrance for you. My favorite perfume, my favorite gourmand, my favorite perfume in my collection, the perfume that makes me feel the happiest and gives me the most like joy and ultimate like 
pleasure from a perfume is Angel Share by Killian. I don't know if you guys can tell if I love it or not. I don't know if I've made that clear. Another perfume that is pretty new to my collection but has quickly raised up to the Angel Share level, like this one's not as loved as Angel Share but it's like right it's like right there, <laughs> right there. That is Date's Delight by the House of Oud. I love this perfume so much. This is another semi-gourmand fragrance, mostly gourmand though. It does smell like a cooking date dessert, like a date cobbler or something that you would make with dates. My husband and I, when we used to live in Springfield, Missouri, we had a restaurant called Char that we used to go to all the time. It used to be called Touch, now it's Char, I believe, but it was our favorite restaurant to go to. And for an appetizer, they had these bacon wrap dates and they were the most delicious, decadent thing I think I've ever tasted in my life. But the dates were like this sweet, like dessert-like dates with like cream cheese and oh my God, it was so good. That's the kind of like cooked, baked dates that's in here, and I love it. It's so good. Obviously, there's no bacon or cream cheese in here, but the dates definitely remind me of that. So there's dates and there's peony in the opening, though, and that's what keeps this from being a full-on foodie gourmand is I can smell the peony in here as well. So there's some floral notes in here that kind of tones it down just a bit. I personally like that because without it, it just would be too much in my opinion. So there's cinnamon in here. I think you guys know I like cinnamon. There's caramel, tonka bean, coumarin. There's honey, which I love honey in my fragrances. There's sugar, vanilla, benzoin, and labdomen. So this is just a semi, mostly gourmand. Mostly gourmand with small floral hints in the fragrance. The sugar, the honey, this is to die for. I'm pretty sure there's oud in here as well because this is by the House of Oud. <laughs> don't they have oud in all their fragrances? Isn't that why they're called the House of Oud? I don't know that for sure. There's no oud listed on Fragrantica, but I'm pretty sure there is. If there's oud in here, it's very, very light. I am not an oud person. I don't love oud. If there's oud in here, it is so like small, I, I can hardly tell. So there might not be oud in here, I don't know. But this is gorgeous. Definitely kind of gives off that Middle Eastern vibe. I would say that Atar Collection, Cult It Night, and this fragrance, these two are very similar. If you like this one, I think you'd like this one and vice versa. They're definitely different though. This has an apple and cherry note in here and this is dates. But they both have that same feel to them, kind of like a dark, mysterious, Middle Eastern, strong, decadent, kind of rich vibe. I just love it so much, and this is one of my ultimate favorite perfumes in my collection. As a matter of fact, these three. So this one, Angel Shares number one, and then these two right here are close seconds in my collection. I really love all three. They all give me that same feel, like coming home for the holidays kind of feel that I just, I can't get enough of. So that is Date's Delight by the House of Oud. Okay, back to another chocolate scent. This is pretty new to my collection. This is by Mancero. This is Choco Violet. And I really love this one. Now, I was kind of worried that this was going to smell too much like Chocolate Greedy from Montal, but luckily for me, I pick up enough differences that I feel like it's justified to have both. So Montal's Chocolate Greedy was that powdery milk chocolate. This is more of a smooth, creamy chocolate to my nose. This also has hazelnut in it where Chocolate Greedy does not, and I think that hazelnut and the violet that's in here really makes it stand apart from Chocolate Greedy. Top notes, you have hazelnut, orange, and bergamot. I do pick up a little bit on the orange and I definitely pick up a little bit on the hazelnut. Hazelnut is not super strong in here, but it does help to make the chocolate seem a little bit more creamy. In the middle, you have dark chocolate and violet, which smells like soft, delicate, candied-like violet to me. There's Madagascar vanilla in here and there's white musk as well. Same type of situation as Chocolate Greedy on a cold, fall or winter day wanting to snuggle with my husband, watch a movie, or just curl up by myself and read a good book. You know, you have your warm, fuzzy blanket and maybe a cup of like coffee or hot chocolate and you just feel all cozy and warm. This is perfect for that. So that is Choco Violet by the House of Mancera. Okay, this is one of my all-time favorite gourmands ever. This is a full-on gourmand to me. This doesn't smell like a semi-gourmand to me. This is just a full-on foodie kind of gourmand. And it's probably my favorite 
the one that I have in my collection when it comes to just straight up gourmands, if that makes sense. This is by Love and Crime, and this is X Idolo. I have been talking about this one a lot lately too. I cannot wait to wear this. This is so good, you guys. I think when this first came out, it was pretty hyped up, but I haven't heard a ton of people talking about it since. But to me, this is just the better version of Lyra by Zerzhov. This smells a lot like Lyra to me, but there are differences for sure. This has mandarin orange, I believe, in the opening, and I can definitely pick up the orange. Lyra is more lemon, and this is definitely more on the orange side. There's also pink pepper in here, which I do pick up on, and I love, I love pink pepper. There's sugar in the middle, there's anise, there's floral notes, but I don't pick up on any of the floral notes. I definitely get the spiciness from the anise, or maybe it's anise. I don't, I still don't know how to pronounce that word. And then in the base, you have vanilla and cacao. It smells to me exactly like a spicy, pink peppery, blood orange sponge cake. I don't know what is causing that sponge cake vibe, but that is exactly what it smells like. It's delicious delicious. This is one of my husband's favorite perfumes on me. He loves this one because I pretty much smell edible. <laughs> I definitely smell like a snack when I wear this and if you are a true gourmand lover and you haven't tried this, you really need to. It is so good. Performance is great. No issues. Definitely a good performing fragrance. So that is Love and Crime by X Idolo. All right, last we have by Kaoli. This is Vanilla 28. Listen, sometimes you just want a simple vanilla fragrance in the fall. Talk about the ultimate cozy fragrance. This is definitely a gorgeous, but yet simple, but yet absolutely beautiful fragrance. This is such a delicious vanilla. I adore this perfume. I think it's so good. I do not find this to be boring. I find it to be easy to wear and a bit simple but not boring in the slightest. So top notes, you have vanilla, orchid, and jasmine. I really don't get the jasmine at all in here. Personally, my nose just does not pick it up. I get a lot of vanilla. I definitely get the brown sugar in here, which I love. That brown sugar and that vanilla combination, it just reminds me of baking. It reminds me, but not like vanilla extract. It's not like a vanilla extract. I don't really like that. Like that's too strong. That's like too, too realistic to a baking vanilla. This just reminds me of like the aroma of baking. You know, when you've got something like a vanilla cake in the oven and you smell the aroma from the vanilla cake, that's what this reminds me of. Not like straight up vanilla extract. I don't get that at all. This is so good. I haven't worn this one in a while. There's tonka bean in here as well, which I love tonka bean. There's some amber, amber wood, musk, and patchouli. The patchouli in here is very well blended. I really don't pick up on anything earthy. If I didn't read the notes, I don't know that I would know there was patchouli in here. I absolutely love it. It is beautiful for layering. It matches with so many other perfumes. And to me, this is just a staple. Like I have to have this in my collection. So if you love vanilla like I do, I highly recommend Vanilla 28 by Kaeli. All right, you guys, and that is it for today's video. Those are my top 10 gourmand fragrances that I am the most excited to wear this fall and I would absolutely love to hear from you. I want to know what gourmands you recommend for me. What sweet, delicious, cozy gourmands are you looking forward to wearing this fall? Let me know in the comment section. If you did like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having an amazing day, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!